Now, obviously, one of the important uh, best practices that we've got in our environments from a design perspective that we need to be thinking about would be backups. And uh, with Azure, we do have uh, quite a few solutions in regards to making sure things are backed up. If you actually go out and do a Google or Bing search on the keywords uh, overview of Azure backup, you'll see this article that you can click on right here. And it gets into the various things that you can deal with when it comes to backing up. Number one, with uh, Azure backup, we can back up on-premise. Uh, data. In fact, there's a couple of ways to do that. There is a an agent you can install called the Mars agent, which can be installed on your client machines or servers, and it'll just back up one machine at a time doing that. Uh, individually, you can have it be backed up into Azure. So it's a little piece of software that you can uh, install. Now, another way would be to use what's called MABS. MABS is the uh, Microsoft Azure Backup Server. And this is where you'd actually set up an actual server in your environment that would be dedicated to uh, backing up files. And um, so I tell you, this will back up VMware as well as Hyper-V virtual machines as well. Then you got just Azure VMs have, their, have a backup directly with uh, Azure using Azure Backup. You can have disk backed up through Azure, Azure File Share, so storage accounts, SQL, SAP, Azure Databases, Azure Blob Storage, Database, Kubernetes. So, um, you know, pretty much the majority of the things that we deal with in Azure can all be backed up with the help of Azure Backup. So it is a enterprise-based solution for keeping things backed up. They even mention how the storage side of all this is very, very redundant. You meaning that you depending on which storage option you go with, you can have multiple copies of your backup stored all over the world. Of course, that does cost more money. Not to dive into all of this right now, but that's sort of the idea. It also, of course, helps protect against ransomware. Okay. Looking at this little image here, a little bigger, you can see right here their backup service. The goal is to provide all of the things you see here, whether your data is stored uh, on premise or whether it's in the cloud. All right. Now, if I go back over to portal.azure.com and um, I click the menu button, go to all services, I can just search for the keyword backup and you'll see the backup center. This is sort of like your. Um, one-stop shop for all your backup needs, if you will, in Azure. Of course, we don't really have anything to back up. So if we wanted to create something to back up, we very well easily could. Let's just, for demonstration purposes, we'll go to the menu button here, and uh, we'll go to all services, and we'll just search for storage. And let's say we want to create a storage account. Now, again, this is not the, I'm not a video where I'm diving deep into storage accounts. All I want to say is that storage accounts are where we can store files and, and what is called blobs, binary large objects, which is just basically binary data and uh, SQL information, all that. No SQL, all can be stored inside of a storage account. So it's a resource for storing information. I can click create. All right. And um, I'm going to go to this, create a new resource group. That's a container. And we'll just call this uh, backup demo RG. That's going to be the name of my little resource group. And my storage account has to have a unique name. I'm going to call this backup demo storage ELP for exam lab practice. And that'll just be a, it's got to be a unique name, globally unique, meaning you can't have other tenants out there that are using the same name. Um, not going to, again, not getting into the intricacies of what all this stuff is in this video. The point is just to quickly create a storage account. All right. So we're just going to go right here and click review and create. And it's going to validate it. And I'm going to click to create. Now, while that is getting created, I'm also going to add a virtual machine for the fun of that. So I'll click the menu button and go down here to, uh, let's see, virtual machines. If you don't see that, you can always click the menu button, go to all services and search virtual machines. So we'll click create. All right, we're going to just create a quick virtual machine. We'll store that in our backup demo RG container. Again, you may not see the same resource groups as me. But that's the only one I care about if you're doing this with me. In my VM, I'm just going to call this um, VM to backup, all right, for lack of a better name. Uh, East US will be my region, no infrastructure required. Um, for redundancy, I'll just do a Windows Server 2022 data center. That's fine. I'm just going to go with the default standards right here. 
uh, for disks, I'm going to change the disk type to standard HDD. Please be advised that these screens change all the time, so your screen might look different than mine. It's not the end of the world. It's just something you got to get used to. In the world we live in today, screens are going to change. Concepts should so, uh, somewhat remain the same, though. I'm going to click Next. Next, over to Management. I am going to do Auto Shutdown, just in case I forget to delete this. It will delete it for me, or it will shut it down and not use up Azure credit. I'm on Eastern Time, so I'm going to do that. Then we're going to click um, Next on Monitoring. I'm going to disable Boot Diagnostics. I don't need that. I'm going to click Review and Create. And then, oh, I left something off. Let's see what I left. Oh, I left off the password information. So, yeah. So let's go right here. We'll change this to, I'm going to say ELP Admin is my username. And I'll put a password in. All right. Now we'll click Review and Create. And we're going to click to Create. All right. So meanwhile, let's jump over to our storage account. If I click the uh, menu button and go to All Services, we'll just search for Storage. Click on Storage Accounts, and I have this storage account right here. All right. And let's say I have something I want to store in it. So I'm going to go here to File Shares. Maybe I want to I want to store a um, something in a file share. All right. So I could do that. Um, and so I'll just go here. I'll create a file share. I'm going to call this file share images because maybe I want to store some images in it. Oh, got to make sure I don't have any uppercase characters in there. All right. And then I can click next. Now, I've got a backup option right here for backing up. If I want to set up a backup policy for my images, I can do that here. So that's the first thing to be aware of when it comes to backups is that you can set up a backup policy and you can have it um, schedule backups. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can always come back and, uh, and do this later. All right. If I enable backup, it's going to create this thing called a recovery services vault, which is going to be like a backup vault. I'll just call it that backup vault. All right. That's fine. It can do this daily if we want. I'm going to click review and create. And we're going to click to create. So we've now created a little file share to store files. And it's got a backup schedule on it. And now, if I want, I could upload a file to that backup vault. So I'm just going to upload a, a drawing. All right, so I just uploaded a image. And uh, this is just an image based on my little YouTube channel. So I'm going to click Upload. And there we go. So that is officially done. And so now I've got... I've got that upload, so I just click Browse. There it is right there. There's the, you can see the, uh, if I, if I want to download the image, there's a picture of what the image looked like. And um, so there's the file. All right. And I can click Backup, as you can see right here. My Backup Vault. I've got an existing Backup Vault. I want to just go ahead and enable a backup for this uh, image, if I, maybe I want to do backup, I could trigger, um, I could schedule, a, you know, set up a new one if I wanted, or I could select my existing backup policy, right? So at that point, we've initialized, we're confirming that's going to, you know, that's part of it. Now, it will, it will be backed up because it's part of that, um, it's part of the uh container that I stored it in the uh, the images share the file share so let's go back over here real quick to storage backup or my storage account back over to your file share all right we have that file share right there go over to backup and as you can see this is still all all in place we're using our existing backup policy if we wanted to create a new backup policy for it, we can. But you can see when it when it's going to occur. You can also see when the retention period is going to be. All right. Now I want to take a look at if we go over to our virtual machine. Uh, click the menu button. I'm going to go over to um, virtual machines. Okay. I'm going to click VM to back up. This little VM that I've got. Now if we go down here, 
click on backup. All right. So I can say, okay, I want to create a new backup. I got the backup vault. And then um, you can do, there's different policies. In this case, enhanced and enhanced backup, multiple backups per day, up to 30. This is in Azure, you'll see that I don't have standard as an option here, be an Azure VM. Uh, multiple backups per day up to 30, okay? And um, supports trusted launch Azure VM. So anyway, you've got these different options and you can set your uh, frequency, do a full backup in this case. Now if I want, I can edit this policy. I click edit this policy you'll notice it'll let me change the uh, frequency so I can do that very easily if I want and I can have it re uh, set the retention period too for how long it's going to retain it okay so you have all of that control now all I got to do is just go right here and click to enable this backup and it's going to go through that process now if we come over here to the menu button and go to all services and we do a search for just the keyword backup we're going to click on backup center all right, and then from there, you will be able to see as backup jobs start happening when the schedule and all. So this one's in process right, um, right now or in progress right now with my VM VM to backup. My image that is in my storage account that one is not the schedule hasn't hit yet, but this one I triggered. So point is through the backup center, you're going to be able to see all backups that are occurring. Okay. So that's that's uh, one of the things to consider here. The, remember, the backup center in Azure Backup is mainly just like, hey, everything involving backups are going to be managed here. You also, in Azure, when it comes to VMs, you have what is called a snapshot. You can create a snapshot, which is just a backup of a virtual disk. So I can click to create a snapshot, and that's going to do what's called a, a point-in-time backup of that disk. So it'll, it'll back up the disk it, it, as the way it is right now, and... Um, you can do what's called incremental, which is um, save on the storage cost by making a partial copy of the disk based on the difference between the last snapshot. So if you already created a previous snapshot and you want to create a new snapshot, it's just going to back up the changes onto that disk. Or um, and that and that essentially saves cost because as long as you've got your original disk and you're just doing a uh, incremental, let's say the original disk has I don't know. Uh, 150 gigs of data on it and so you've got that and then you do an incremental the incremental disk would just save anything new and um, if you needed to revert back to that original disk you can just revert back to that original disk if you want and then you have what's called a full copy which is obviously real simple that's just hey back up the entire disk it's going to get expensive more expensive to do that if you're doing that with every uh, virtual machine disk okay but um but anyway, that's another option as opposed to, you know, backing up the entire VM and everything, you know, involving that. You can just back up the, the disk as well. Uh, the main thing to get across here, though, is that um, your, your, your backup center is where everything is going to be stored. So if I go to Azure Backup right here, um, click on Backup Center. If I search Azure Backup, I should say go to Backup Center. This is where everything's going to be. And then also you can set, you can trigger a backup if you want from here as well. So you can choose what you want to back up. Okay. You can select a select a vault, right? If I was dealing with um, this, I've got a, I've already got a vault set up. Okay. In this case, multiple because I've had a different one for my virtual machine. And then also when it comes to restore, you can do restore here as well. So you can restore. Now, the my backup virtual machine is not done. It's not complete yet, so I don't have a restore option for that. But uh, again, ultimately, this is where all of that stuff is going to be managed. And hopefully that now gives you a better understanding of our backup options in regard to uh, Azure. Now, the only other thing we want to do is we want to delete our um, resource group so it's not using up any of our resources so you can go to resource groups um, or if you're like on your virtual machine or something like I am here I can just click my resource group and 
we're going to try to delete it. Now I'm going to warn you there'll be an error and we'll read what that error says. We're going to go delete resource group. We're going to copy the resource group name, apply it, and then hit delete. Okay, now it's going to throw an error. Let's read what the error says. It's going to put a lock on our storage account because of the backup um, vault that's in place. So we're just going to delete that, delete that lock. And now if we go back, let's try deleting the resource group. Paste that in, delete and it should start going through successfully now. And the reason we're doing this is because we don't want to be using up our Azure credits, and I'm not really uh, diving into the intricacies of, of these different services right now. I just wanted to put those in there just to have something I could demonstrate uh, performing a backup with. And after saying that, I realized there was one more issue. When you go through and delete the uh, resources, the backup vault will still be there. And let's go into the backup vault and let's try and delete it. And when you go to delete it, this was the part I had forgotten about when I was going through the process, is um, there are a few things that have to happen before it will successfully allow you to delete it. So we're going to go through and, uh, and perform those steps now. Okay, first thing it mentions is just having permissions with multi-factor authentication. I don't need to do anything there. Disable soft delete. So if I go to settings right here, we're going to click Disable on the Soft Delete. We're going to click Save. And uh, that is done. All right. And then uh, for Backup Items, let's go to Backup Items and look and see. Okay, so we have this Azure Storage, uh, Azure Files. All right. I had finished the, I had triggered it earlier when I was playing around to stop it, but um, I'm going to hit Stop Backup. All right. Just going to hit stop backup. Oh, got to give it a reason. Let's just say others and we'll click stop backup. Okay, so that is going to take effect. Okay, now that that is done, one more thing we need to do. We'll go over here to go to backup items. Click on Azure storage. We're going to go in here to delete the backup data as well. Uh, what's the name of the uh, data? Well, it's this container here called images. So I'm going to put in images and then it's going to ask for a reason. I'm just going to put other and then I'm going to hit delete. Okay, once that's done, there's actually one more thing we need to take care of. We're going to go back up to our backup vault and we're going to scroll down and go to backup infrastructure. We're going to go to storage accounts and we got to uh, unregister the storage account. Even though the storage account no longer exists, we got to unregister uh, the link to it. So I'm just going to copy the name here. Okay, it wants a reason. I'm just going to put other and then comments. I'm going to say delete. And then I'm going to hit delete. Okay, once that's done, I'm going to go right into my backup vault here and we're going to click to delete. Scroll down, I confirm, and click yes. That should go through the process now of successfully deleting the backup vault. Now I can delete the resource group officially and that's it now I'm uh, I have completed everything I wanted to complete and hopefully now all that uh, makes sense I know that was quite a, a journey just to get that thing deleted but hopefully uh, you gain some knowledge out of this